People that say macaws love the cage, that's the same as saying a call girl does it for the sex. As most of my followers know, I am outspoken in my beliefs about freedom and that the rules, our society's rules are made for humans. They're not made for these birds. And it's not fair to subject them to all our follies. However, most people have a hard time separating. Most people mentally, since it seems so abnormal, they can't process the difference. And they don't understand that this species survived out in nature longer than humanity. And it doesn't need humanity to survive. Humanity has been its downfall. And thinking that, for instance, thinking that they're cold at night, that's just ignorant. If they're in a sedentary, unnatural environment, of course, because their body can't regulate like it's supposed to. Their digestive system, respiratory system, every immune system, all of that is out of whack. And that's why you see them plucked and weird behavior and even trying to commit suicide. The only other animal that they know of that tries to commit suicide are dolphins, which do commit suicide besides parrots. And as a species goes, the brain size of a macaw in ratio to other animals is right up there with primates and humans. In fact, they're much smarter than us. They don't need smartphones. They don't go to church. They don't need divorce. They don't need money. All these stupid things that we have that we think make us superior species really make us inferior. And with social media, the animals pay the price. Total exploitation of animals with social media. People will do anything to get a like or a click, you know, clickbait. And unfortunately, animals pay the price. They're essentially circus performers. Like the birds ride, macaws riding a bicycle, macaw, macaw flying next to a car. Um, all this stuff, it's desperate. It's disgusting. It's unnatural. There are no rules for my birds. I'm just a nanny. And they love chewing their holes in the walls, tearing things up, making a mess. My bird Mary, she'll open the cabinet, take a dish, throw it on the floor, and then look to see if I'm coming. And I don't care. I don't even care if it's a lolly plate that costs thousands of dollars because I value their needs and their life more than my own. People can't see beyond themselves. Very few people can see beyond themselves. And because our brains are wired for self-preservation and then everybody has this narcissistic view, you know, they think these birds are supposed to be part of like a menagerie of animals or even in Tiger King when they're unloading the macaws when they're moving the zoo, they're all like, it's a piece of old furniture. They're just shoved in that old wiry cage. So many of them, it was disgusting. And then the second Tiger King, the second Tiger King, that guy, Tim Stark, 200 birds died because he had no ventilation and transporting them in a sealed like box car or whatever. It was disgusting. No one cared. They just are trying to help the tigers. No one does anything for these birds. They, they bitch about their screaming. Well, their screaming is ignored. And, oh, by the way, this one right here, he may look like a military. It's not a military. It's a bouffant or great green. And a few times, some kind of, I don't know, preservation society called me trying to get him. And they said they really needed him to help preserve the species. And I could not believe it. I said, it is not his job to preserve the species. It's his job to have a beautiful life and do what he wants to do. 
if they really care about it so much, then they can send whatever they want here where they can do what they want. He's not going to sit in some breeding facility for the rest of his life. It's disgusting. The way, and they think they're helping the species that way. And the way you tell a difference between a great green and a military is the great greens, Buffons, they're much bigger. And you see he has blue eyes. He's the only macaw with blue eyes. This is probably one of the rarest ones you can have. And I don't have him because he's rare. I have him because I love him and he needed a place to live forever. Emphatically. Everybody knows, I believe, keeping them in a cage isn't wrong. Cages are for people. They're not for these birds. Of all things, to stick in a cage something that has flight, to make them come to our rules and our fears, it's disgusting. And you have to think beyond yourself and understand this. In Coral Gables, Florida, oh, by the way, that's my girl right there. I love her more than anything on earth. In Coral Gables, Florida, I'm gonna show you a colony of wild macaws. This is in Coral Gables, Florida. There's a colony of wild macaws. They have torrential downpours in this area. The colony survives the typhoons the torrential downpours, the tornadoes. It's beautiful. They don't need enclosures. People have to understand they already own them. They don't need them in their living rooms, garages, sheds, attics, basements. They already own them. They already have the cage. It's called the sky. To so all my followers who contacted me about my birds that were trafficked to Texas, I want to tell you thank you for offering your assistance. And I have lawyers working on it I, and law enforcement. Let's let them do their thing and go from there. Actually, I'll give an update on the whole thing um, in a day or two.